It's a beautiful fall right now and our friends at Manscaped want to make sure it's beautiful when your pants fall. Don't let the trees be the only thing dropping their excess leaves and give your trunk the look it deserves with the leaders in male grooming and their fourth generation performance package. Boys, get your baby makers ready for a cuffing season like no other and join the 4 million men worldwide using Manscaped. Make sure you go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy the podcast. Let's talk about the final. We've talked about seven teams there. So yep. let's say that there's competition for that eighth spot and potentially the seventh yep. spot. Like, obviously, one of those teams we talked about could fall apart, yeah. could fall, fall out of the eight. Um, <coughs> Hopefully. <laughs> you've been big on the pies. You said in the group I, chat you could see them making yep. a shock September run. I'll we'll expand on that. I'll expand on that. I thought they were like, I think they're enough of a dark horse where I wanted to sort of stake my claim in the event they do like finish seventh and go on like a Bulldogs 2016 type of run, not necessarily saying they'd win, but make the Grandy was sort of, I think, was it win or make the Grandy the call? I'll say fuck it. It's a said, dark horse, Ruffy. I They're going to win. Fuck it. Bulldogs, which implies yeah. flag. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, um, we'll fuck it. We'll put it out there. It's a dark horse, but uh, anyway, I'll fucking put it uh, out We'll there. put it on TikTok. Hopefully it'll get a few hate comments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think Collingwood's brand has been really good yep. at times this year, and you would have seen it. Um, Back-to-back um, wins over top four teams, yeah. which is sort of what... Yeah. Made me make that bold prediction. Mm. They're just uh, they're just and their top and end talent is just mm. as good as almost anyone's. And their young talent's really yeah, good too. Exactly, they're um, getting that emergence from all sorts of Oliver Henry, yep. in particular, Jack um, Ginnivan. Yep, Dacos had a great Dacos, game as yep. well. Uh, and then um, McCreary is another. Quainor's team. gone up another level yeah, this year. Yeah, he's uh, really good. Really big fan of Quainor actually. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, uh, I think he's a really good player. I, I think yeah. yeah. Um, then even their midfield's really good. Like Chris Adams, mm. Brody Grundy will be back in time for finals if they can hold on yeah so uh, and you know Jordan Degoe's we yep. didn't even mention there so uh, yeah I agree they've got star power they've got youthful exuberance they've just faltered at times so that's why they're in the position they're yeah. in um, but, but I think their brand has been good especially considering the fact start of the season we'd had them bottom four mm. well I certainly had them bottom four yes oh my god I think I might I have can... actually picked them for the spoon yeah <laughs> yeah I, I, I won't agree on the going deep into September for me, Collingwood, but they can certainly make it. Uh, and I find myself almost hoping they do because I think they deserve to. Obviously, uh, you know, whether they deserve to will depend on, you know, their own form. But don't know who I'd rather out of them and the Bulldogs, which would like making I think it. I'd They're both see Collingwood at this stage. And I like the Bulldogs too. Uh, but in uh, terms of talent that can fire though and put on good games in the finals, yeah, it's a tough yeah. decision. But I'd, I'd have to lean to the dog slightly on okay. that. Okay, so that was kind of my question is um, who who outside of the eight co- uh, comes into it? So you think the Bulldogs? Uh, not necessarily. I'm just sort of saying in terms of a talented team to make finals, they're okay. the most likely to make a noise in September if they sneak in 7, 8, for whatever. Okay. I, as far as I see it, if we, if we accept that the seven teams are making it, yep. there's one spot up for grabs, and then you've got Collingwood in that position right now. Right below them is the Dogs and Richmond. Yeah. And to be honest, I find it hard to split those three teams mm. clearly, to be honest. I think the Bulldogs are the most yeah. proven, obviously. I even had Port Adelaide and Gold Coast in that tier as well to make the top eight. I have them personally slightly behind that group, yeah. but not far behind. Yeah. Um, it's hard looking at the ladder right now because Port have played one less game, so they currently yeah. sit 12th. But uh, that's obviously not truly reflective just yeah. yet. At no point yeah. is the ladder actually truly reflective yeah. until the end of the yeah. year anyway. But... Um, and looking at my tiers as well, Gold Coast could probably just as easily go into my next tier below as well as being in this top eight group. But I've sort of seen enough from this year where I think if everything goes right, they could possibly mm. make the top eight, but they're realistically in the below tier of optimistically missing finals. I think it's too competitive for the Gold Coast personally. I think there's too many teams I, I think have slightly on them. But they are playing really well. So that was kind of... I was going to lead into it. How, how do you appraise Gold Coast? Like, what what have you made of their performance this year with them in mind that Stewie Jew is out of contract at the end of the year? They've sort of added that consistency. Like, years past, they sort of would show flashes of being good, then have a few shit weeks, and then sort of really fluctuate. But this year, they've sort of built a really consistent floor to really play yeah. a good brand of footy. Yep, they haven't had any, like, terrible performances off the top of my head yeah i can't think of any um yeah no i don't think there have been any they obviously have lost games but that's to be expected they, they, yeah they, they currently sit higher on the ladder than they've ever finished admittedly huh. it's in a buy round so yeah. that could come down a little bit but 12th is the best they've ever finished and they currently sit 11th they've had wins over sydney and Fremantle, teams that we 
In fact, you know, said yep. top four. So, yeah. um, and then also really convincing wins over North Melbourne when they were challenged early. I thought North started that game really well, uh, and then annihilated Hawthorne, who yeah, yeah. we'll talk about. Yeah, that's the bit, other but. thing with Gold Coast. I've sort of shown they can stand up to adversity yep. this year. I think that's yes. another thing that I've really making me buy in. Yeah, there's been a clear linear improvement from this year. Yeah. At, they currently sit on six wins. They only had seven last year and five the year before. Do you think? It's fair to suggest that Stewie Jews earned another shot and nearly burped. Sorry. Bloody oath he has. Mm. There's, but you say it. You give these coaches a sustained chance that succeeds more often, not like more often when they cut their legs out from under them like a few years into the deal. Yeah. They're just back to square one with a different coach rather than really letting this guy have a few years to build his brand. Like even JL, he's taken... Mm. You can see year upon year how he's added layers to... What yeah. he, how he wants football to be played. And 100%. Stu Drew's probably been doing the same. Yep. But I haven't observed it as much because I don't watch as much Gold Coast as Freo, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Nobody watches that much Gold Coast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I think the results speak for themselves. I think the position yep. they're in, Stu Drew's doing a really good effort, making a really good effort. And we're starting to see the the growth in pl- play. I think their issue now, as it's been for the last 10 years, is retention. So mm. the, we, we think what we see from their young nucleus is good but if that starts falling away and they just replace them with draft picks it's going mm. to be very very hard to move up the ladder especially when you still see examples of like the will Brody deal happening with oh, gold yeah. coast like having to push guys like that out giving away top quality draft picks mm. to get rid of those contracts mm. and the guy just turns it around the way he has that sort of they can't have another situation like that no i, I think that's kind of the product of they're um, you know, overpaying for players yep. we've talked about on this podcast where they've given inflated contracts to retain players and it just means that a few players get pushed out. And, and in fairness to them, Will Brody, he's a very good player, but um, you know, when you look at their talent profile, yeah, yeah. You, you can see why they thought, you know what, Brody's probably excess to requirements. Is it ideal giving up pick 19 to get rid of him? No. Yeah, they, but, yeah. yeah. and the other thing is they've, they've got heaps of draft picks this year. They've got like a whole bevy mm. of second rounders, so... Yeah, but I agree with what you're saying. They, they can't keep finding themselves in this position yeah. um, and they need to have players buy in, which I think there's They're a starting chance. to turn, yeah. Yeah, for, for the first time, you can see why players would want to stay at the Yeah, culture stars. drivers like Raul, even though his form's dropped off, he'd be a culture driver still, like yep. Anderson even, because they're close friends. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that Andy Brayshaw type of person for their team, but sort of the young guy that comes in and sort of leads by example. Yep. Everyone else sees how hard he trains and all the extra shit they do. Yes. So then everyone else has to sort of match them and sort 100%. of builds from there. Yeah, yeah. From the uh, from the outside looking in, it looks like the culture's solid. And Ben King re-signed as well. Yep. So, um, yeah. That was one they were particularly worried about. Has Lukosius and Rankin re-signed yet? I think they were the two they were worried about I as well. I think that is still open. Like, yeah. I don't think that's that. I don't think they've re-signed. Yeah. Um, yeah, not not too sure, but I, I don't think so. We would have heard about it. Uh, yeah, so just going back to the tears for a minute, we took a little tangent there on uh, the Gold Coast Suns, but um, the Pies, Dogs and Richmond for me and the Suns and Port, you sort of grouped them a little bit more evenly than that, but I yep. thought the Suns and Port for me are a little bit behind. Uh, Richmond have at times looked bloody good this mm. year. It's They're one of the more frustrating teams. 